The Federal High Court in Abuja sacked the Speaker of the Cross River State House of Assembly, Eteng Williams, and 17 of his colleagues over their defection from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressive Congress. Two members of the House of Representatives from the state, Michael Etaba and Lego Idago, were also sacked by the courts. The judge, Taiwo Taiwo, while delivering judgment on a suit instituted by the People's Democratic Party to challenge the lawmaker's defection, dismissed all preliminary objections raised by the sacked lawmakers. He noted that the lawmakers ditched the party even when there was no justification for their action. Well, joining us to discuss this is James Ibo, a legal practitioner, and Jonathan Abang, a journalist in Cross River State. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Great. I'm going to start with Thank you, you. Um, James. Let's look at the legality of these defections. You know, this is something that a lot of people have been debating on. Let's start with the Ebony State um, situation. Um, as, as soon as the Ebony State um, case was um, announced, the state um, high court also issued their own. Um, 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 they, they gave a judgment saying that, countering the one that the federal high court had given. But then, of course, the people are also debating on that legality because as it is, the PDP in a boring state is still asking INEC to issue a certificate of return to the People's Democratic Party's nominee uh, for governor. So let's start with that and then we we'll bring it down to what's happening in Cross River. Yes, uh, what happened on uh, the case of a Boeing state governor and the later judgment by the state high court is actually very sad and unfortunate and um, clearly shows that um, we still have a lot of work to do with our judiciary because both the state high court and the federal high court are cause of con um, coordinate jurisdiction. They are in the same level they are on the same pedestal. So it is sad that on same issues, same parties, these cases were going on simultaneously. I don't know what really happened. A situation where immediately the Federal High Court of Abuja gave judgment, the State High Court, which obviously, given the circumstance and from my experience, um, seems to be a judgment in Flint. I think NJC and the Nigerian Bar Association has a lot of work to do to ensure that corrupt judges uh, do not. In fact, these days at the Federal High Court, when you're filing any suit, uh, you have to depose an affidavit that uh, uh, there is no other suit and you're not going to duplicate suits. So obviously what happened in the Boeing State High Court is uh, a misnomer and NJC should meet out the appropriate sanctions on uh, the offending judge is unfortunate. But obviously, I think uh, the governor has um, uh, jettisoned that judgment, has, uh, has gone ahead, which is the right thing to do, to appeal the Federal High Court uh, judgment. And whether or not he will succeed, the matter is of this. I will not want to comment on it, but I think it's a good thing. The Supreme Court, uh, the Court of Appeal will have to you know, affirmed his previous judgment or distinguish it. And um, most likely the matters will get up to Supreme Court. Now, a lot of people have, uh, have applauded, of course, just as you said, the, the courts for this judgment because it's now a precedence for many other cases to come. As, as, as I mean, as, as you know, a lot of people started pointing at Cross River uh, to be the next point, uh, point of call for the People's Democratic Party. And that didn't take long uh, before we saw these 18 lawmakers, um, if not 17 lawmakers, um, you know, struck off by the court. Now, let's also look at what happens to those men. Now, we know that those um, members had defected with the governor to the All Progressive Congress, even though they had been um, elected on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. So the question is, what happens to these men? Yeah, that is, um, sorry, I missed you there shortly. Um, please, the question again. Yeah, well, we're looking at the, the members of the House of Assembly and, of course, the two members of the National Assembly who've also uh, been sacked by the court. And one is wondering what would be 
um, the fate of these men? Are they not allowed to sit anymore in the House? Because that means that they have been stripped of uh, that vote that was given to them on the platform of the People's Democratic Party. So what is the next line of action legally? Yes, of course, the, the seats are vacant and uh, they cannot uh, participate in any proceedings in the Cross River State House of Assembly. That is the law as of today. And uh, notwithstanding the fact that they have appealed the judgment, there is no motion for stay um, as we speak. I'm aware um, uh, they have appealed the judgment and the law is that we have seven members of the Cross River State House of Assembly today in Cross River State. And um, I saw videos from um, Cross River Watch uh, showing that the police have barricaded the place, barricaded the place. I don't know why. I don't know who gave that instructions. But um, the, I think the seven members still have to do the business of legislation. Um, I, I suspect that uh, the governor may have given the instructions, maybe afraid that... Uh, Maybe he may be impeached or something. I don't think um, the, the seven lawmakers have the capacity to impeach the governor. Uh, that is not the law. The Supreme Court made that very clear in uh, the case of Darie. Um, what if you, for you to impeach a governor, you need to third majority. And to third majority will be the number of um, House of Assembly as envisaged by the Constitution, which is a maximum of 40 and a minimum of 24. In Cross River State, we have 25 members of the House of Assembly. If for uh, the operation of law, which is the court judgment, uh, 18 seats are vacant, then we have to replace those 18 seats because seven people cannot determine the fate of a governor when allegations of corruption or impeachment has to. So there is nothing the governor uh, should be afraid of by locking up the House of Assembly. There are all other things that the seven members by law can still do. So there's no reason, there's no justification whatsoever why the seven members of Cross Valley State House of Assembly with their valid mandate should be locked out. I'm aware they are joined to today to consider very important bills to my knowledge, but unfortunately they were not able to sit today and may not James, so we'll be just... able to sit in the coming days because okay. of the cases. Okay, James, uh, we lost you for a second there, but let's quickly go to Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, you obviously um, have been reporting on this issue. Um, give us a fair um, idea of what transpired today at the House of Assembly. Uh, were you personally there and what reports were you getting? Uh, were you able to speak to any of the lawmakers who were shot out of the complex? Jonathan, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, of course. Uh, I personally drove by there a couple of times uh, uh, to see what had happened. And I can tell you that as early as 6 a.m., uh, the first set of people who went to the House of Assembly uh, were a group of uh, people, you know, uh, probably Nigerians. I don't know if they are Nigerians or not. But they were alleged to be apologists of the All Progressive uh, uh, Congress. That has not been verified up till uh, uh, this moment. They uh, went to the gate, and then the police came in uh, uh, a few minutes uh, later. And the first people who responded were policemen from the uh, uh, state command of uh, the Nigerian uh, police force at Daimon Hill, which is less than 800 meters away. Not 800 kilometers, but 800 meters. That's less than a kilometer away from the entrance of uh, the, uh, uh, what they call it, the Cross State House of Assembly uh, uh, complex. And uh, as at uh, uh, about uh, 3 p.m. this evening when I passed there last, there were no fewer than 11 police uh, uh, trucks uh, stationed within 300 meters of the entrance to the Cross State House of Assembly, including the armored personnel, uh, personnel carrier, that's the APC, uh, belonging to the Mukul 11 Squadron of the Nigerian Police Force, which is in, in Calabar, produced by uh, Propos. Now, uh, what I got to learn initially was that uh, uh, they, they were fears that uh, the seven remaining uh, House of Assembly members, who are members of the People's Democratic Party, 
uh, would have gathered and then probably moved a motion for the impeachment of uh, uh, the governor. But, of course, that's left on the realm of uh, law, which uh, James Ibo Esquire uh, had e earlier uh, explained, of course. But, however, what I saw when I drove past there a couple of times, especially in the morning, was that uh, men, personnel of the Nigeria Police Force, attached to Operation Puff Adder, the anti-cultism and kidnapping squad in Calabar, the Dragon Base, the control room, the Atapa division, the state housing division, and from the state CIG, were all stationed, either stationed uh, a couple of meters to the entrance of the Crossover State House of Assembly, which is located at the rear entrance of the Udokaha Jacob SUN, that's the UJ SUN Sports Stadium, and next to the Nigerian Navy ship uh, Victory, uh, as well as a couple of meters away from the entrance to the governor's lodge, the deputy governor's lodge, and the lodge of the chief judge of the High Court of Cross River State, as well as the museum uh, uh, in Calabar. Uh, the, these were all locked out, and no one could access uh, the uh, uh, Cross River State House of Assembly complex, including civil and public servants who are working uh, at the Cross River State House of Assembly complex. But, however, it was interesting to note that the Commissioner for Sustainable Development Goals, uh, by name Oliver O'Rock, uh, mm -hmm. was there discussing with civil servants as well as police officers. He, le he left uh, uh, about an hour later at about uh, uh, 10 a.m. He came in about 9 a.m. and left about 10 a.m. after discussing with them. But the police, as, as about 3 p.m. when I passed there last, they were still stationed there. And when I called a colleague of mine, as well as sources, in the Cross State Command of the Niger Police, they told me that as at 5.30 p.m., with, when last I spoke with them, they were still stationed at uh, the Cross State House of Assembly uh, complex. And according to the Commissioner of Police, when we spoke with him, they said it was to prevent, the deployment of police officers was to prevent a breakdown of law and order based on the judgment uh, order from uh, Justice Taiwo Taiwo of the Abuja Division of the Federal High Court, which sacked 18 uh, uh, state lawmakers, that's 18 members of the Cross State House of Assembly and two members of the uh, Federal House of Representatives from uh, Cross River. Well, I mean, the APC um, state chairman, um, we all know, Afosus Oga Eba, had said that there was no cause for alarm, but the picture that you've painted to me seems more alarmist uh, as opposed to what he has said, because um, quoting him, he had said that um, the judgment against our lawmakers, that's the lawmakers in Cross River States, this is me quoting Alfonso Seba, is nothing to worry about. We trust that the appellate yes. court will do justice as we file our appeal. The party's leadership therefore has urged the APCs uh, and their members to stay calm and not be distracted. But then yes, you're, tell course. you're telling me that civil servants were unable to assess their offices. You're telling me that exactly. lawmakers who have not been sacked by the courts were unable to also do their daily duties. And, and exactly. the, the chairman of the party is saying that there is no cause for alarm. Where do we see this going? Because if, if this is what's happened all through today, and you're saying it's at 5 p.m. today, the police is still stationed there. Um, what do you think that they're planning to do? Because if these lawmakers are unable to do their daily job, um, it means that um, they will also be as redundant as the men who have been sacked. So what's, uh, what happens next? Marianne, you are uh, entirely correct when uh, you say that uh, uh, the seven lawmakers left uh, as uh, uh, acts redundant as those who have been sacked. Now, I would love, uh, maybe James will explain to us uh, uh, better what forms a quorum out of 25 members, if seven members will form a quorum to even sit to, uh, uh, you know, go about uh, the daily legislative business. Because uh, from the conversations I've had with different uh, uh, lawyers, of course, uh, is that uh, well, these seven are what is left of the Cross River State House of Assembly uh, uh, right now. I, I have seen documents which suggest that the Cross River State, uh, you know, those who were sacked, the 18 were sacked, including the two Federal House of Progress members, have gone to file uh, a notice of appeal. What I am not aware of is whether they have filed a stay of execution order. But of course, you and I know that. Filing a stay of execution order doesn't end there. It has to be listed in the cost list of the cost list of the courts and uh, of the courts rather, and then that will uh, will go on as well uh, if they, that will be decided. However, 
What I insist and I say clearly is that the seven members who were not served, the, the civil servants and the public servants were not allowed entry. So as it stands, for 24, uh, for, for the entire of the work uh, load today, uh, no one who is working in the Crossover State House of Assembly had access to the Crossover State House of Assembly. And not just the Crossover State House of Assembly. There are two government house lodges which need it for you to assess them. The Solomon Uno Lodge and uh, one other lodge, I can't recall uh, the name now. You have to assess them through the main entrance of the Crossover State House of Assembly. So staff of the Crossover State Government who work in these lodges could not even assess those places because that is the main entrance. And, of course, what that means is that at the end of the month, if these people receive salaries, they are going to receive salaries, including for today, which they did not work for. That is uh, 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 what uh, it is, Maria. And it's crazy. I, I know in Nigeria we don't talk about man hours. We pay basically uh, minimum wage or whatever it, it is. At the end of the month, we don't pay based on hours. But if they were to pay based on hours, that means some people would have been denied entry into their workplace, people who are willing to work, but were not allowed into their workplace. And that would, in my mind, would have led to some sort of class action suit against uh, uh, the government for allowing their agents and previous to stop them from getting to their place of work to work and, and, for the and, hours and that who's, and, who's, and who's going to file that suit? And well, unfortunately, like I said, in Nigeria, we don't uh, calculate man hours. Uh, exactly. Uh, my, question, not, my, my question uh, didn't need an answer, but that's, that's fine. <laughs> I, I'm going to yeah, go right, back okay. to Mr. Ibo. Um, Mr. Ibo, it looks like we're off to a very good start for 2023 to, on, in the run-up to 2023. Uh, one would have thought it would be a very less dramatic um, you know, lead up to the 2023 elections because um, just as Jonathan said, in saner climes, you would, whether you have opposition in, you know, at the helm of affairs or not, you, you, there has to be some drama. But in Cross River State, a lot of people had said that, oh, well, you know, it's just going to be business as usual because of who's at the helm of affairs. But then it seems that it's going to be a lot of drama and uh, there's a lot that needs to be seen. But coming back to the issue, what's the fate of these lawmakers who have not been able to assess the um, assembly grounds? What, what should be the next line of action? Do they even have a case in the first place? And I know that seven cannot form a quorum uh, within the, any assembly, whether it be the lower house or the upper house. Um, and so what do these people do in the interim with all of this security that's not letting them into their office? Again, does the governor have the power? And I, I, I don't even want to say it's the governor who gave this order, but who gave the order that these policemen barricade um, the way to the assembly because this looks like a deliberate attempt to stop these men from working. And, and legally, what should be their next course of action or line of action? Yes, thank you very much. I think um, we have right to speculate. If you're conscious of the activities of the cross state politics, uh, politicians, especially the politics in the cross state House of Assembly, you understand why um, one can speculate that uh, the government may have persuaded the Inspector General of Police to lock, up, uh, lock out the seven members. Uh, the reason is clear. Uh, immediately, the seven members refused to defect. The allowances were stopped. They've not been paid. Recently, they had a, um, a peaceful resolution of the cases they had in court, and the government... Uh, the speaker promised to pay them. I understand up to now they've not been paid. So there is this fear that these seven members um, will try to pay back. The truth is, you cannot stop them from meeting. They can form a quorum because as it stands now, by operation of law, we have seven members of the House of Assembly. The only limitation is that there are certain actions they cannot take. One of, the, what are those, one of actions? those actions is impeaching the governor. Because the Supreme Court has given inter interpretation to what you need to impeach a governor. And that was in the case of uh, Joshua Darie and, uh, um, in 2007, Supreme Court. So it's, um, it's very clear. And uh, if the governor thinks um, the seven members can impeach him, it is not possible. It is not true. But he cannot. Or the Nigerian police force cannot stop them from meeting. 
They can give them protection if they suspect that hoodlums will want to attack them. Like Jonathan clearly pointed out, you cannot stop the business of uh, the state because 18 members of the House of Assembly were sacked. Mm. You know? So it's, um, I think they have a course of action. The seven members of the Crossroads House of Assembly have a, a course of action. And uh, I wouldn't want, if I have the opportunity of advising the governor or the Inspector General of Police, I wouldn't want them to, to allow it to degenerate to that point because if they go to court, I can, I can assure you that they will succeed. Hmm. They were elected by their people to do the business of legislation in Cross River State. You cannot stop them because 18 for their seeming indiscretion were sacked. Okay, interesting. Well, I want to say thank you to um, James Ibo. He's a legal practitioner. Jonathan Abang is a journalist, and both of them are from Cross River State. Well, what um, continues to unfold in Cross River State remains to be seen. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. And thank you thank for you. staying with us. Um, as we round off the show tonight, we're, Nigerians are going to be telling us their thoughts as regards the third force and what 2023 holds for them. I am Mary Anna Cohn. It's been Plus Politics. I'll see you tomorrow as we talk for development. I didn't think any third party can conquer APC or PDP in this Nigeria, this century. Yeah. I didn't know maybe in the future, but now to you, like 10 years to this time, it can't. Yeah. Because APC and PDP, like, I didn't know what really happened, but people like our mentality people for APC and PDP, we believe that they are the only person that can do it. But let's just try to another party. Maybe we can see the difference in this country. The issue is that before a top force takes up that job or takes up the takes out um, APC and PDP, uh, it would have been maybe for next uh, uh, coming election, but not for now because for me they are not prepared yet. You understand? So before you take a vote, you would have built a structure. APC and PDP is is taking over because they've already established a structure all over the countries and even at the at least the local levels, the you know, grassroots structure is very important. I don't think so. You know, since they are the ruling party, and you know Nigeria now, before you can kick away a ruling party, it's always a very serious something. Except if they would bring a, how will I say it, a good candidate from other party, they can have chance. But mm, as it stands now, I don't think... It is possible if we can pray one and be united and know the plan and the vision of this third party, then we will fight and make it possible.